What up guys? So, in the other video, I got a request, uh, and there was a lot of likes on it, and I didn't really think it'd be that interesting of a topic, but why not make a quick video for you guys? So, the question was, how did I get into cars, and what was like my upbringing? So, basically, first things first, I always like, you know, bike, like, you know, BMX and like skateboarding, but... I got more into skateboarding, and then uh, I hurt my ankle a couple times. I wasn't that good. I was all right. I'll, I don't know. I'll overlay a clip from like five years ago. Right here. Oh! So after skateboarding, I ended up getting a dirt bike. My first dirt bike I got when I was I think ten. I want to say, and it was a KLX 110. It's a three-speed semi-automatic, and um. I really got into dirt bikes and I was like, damn, this is cool. So like anything with engines kind of like caught my interest like immediately. And like even before that, like I was playing like, I remember on my, my Nintendo DS, I had a Asphalt, if any of you guys have ever played that. And I was like, damn, this is sick. Like I had the Z in it. I was like, the Z was brand new. So yeah, it was like 2003 when that was happening. And uh, yeah, so I played a lot of car games. I never really played video games. The only games I ever played were like Need for Speed Carbon and like just car stuff, my, like my PSP, stuff like that. So um, that's kind of how it like originated. Then after I got my, uh, I had a KX100 when I was in seventh grade and I was like, yeah, I'm going to get a two stroke. It's bigger, six speed, all that stuff. Power to weight is dope. I used to go riding at this place called the Thomas and Dam. If anyone's ever been there, if anyone hasn't, it's open, it's legal. All you have to do is register your dirt bike, which is like, I think it's like 30 bucks or 40 bucks it cost me. And I, I like mowed a couple lawns to do that. So yeah, it's in Thomas and Connecticut. It's maintained by the Marine Corps. So that's all, uh, that's all what I did for that. So I had my KX100. Now I had that for like two years and then I started riding a CR250, but I still had my 100. Um, I actually rebuilt the 100 three times because it blew up. I blew the bottom end out of it. And um, after that, what I ended up doing is I traded, crazy deal, I traded my 2002 KX100 for a 1989 Chevy K5 Blazer with a good wrench crate 350, uh, 77K original miles on the whole truck, it was immaculate, it just had some clear coat fade on the hood, uh, I blew up the 700 R4 tranny in that, doing like donuts and hill climbs and stuff, I had a tranny leak, so you guys know how that goes when you're... 14 with a car if any of you guys have a car that young but uh after that I ended up selling it for 800 bucks and my grandma had this Accord now this is where the Japanese cars come into play my grandma had a 96 Accord she was the only owner had 230k on it and a blown head gasket and she wanted 500 bucks for it and I was like all right cool I have 500 bucks I have 300 left over to do some mods to it uh, I got the Godspeed like 38 dollar like lowering springs or whatever Slammed it and then I eventually ended up getting true heart struts that sat a little bit lower so I could lower it and still have like shock travel Which wasn't much. It was probably that much shock travel. So I Started getting into like I was like alright this is cool also it was automatic which that sucked But I never registered it. I drove around with like a blue Connecticut plate from the 80s Like I don't know how I didn't get pulled over. I only had a rear plate too in Connecticut You need to have a front plate. So I had that my neighbor comes up to me is this, uh, this, he, had, he was a Puerto Rican dude. He only worked on Hondas. He hated anything else. He, like, he worked on Hondas and sold Hondas from his garage up the street from me. And I kept telling him, I was like, dude, because I really wanted, like, an EG or something. Like, but they're too expensive. They're like, they're, that's, like, the most drift-taxed Honda. Like, an EG hatch is probably the most drift-taxed Honda you can get. Drift-taxed. But he came over one day, and this dude had a cra crazy accent. It was hilarious. But this dude comes over, he's like, I got a Yetta. You still want to trade for a five-speed standard? I'm like, yeah, dude, you got a standard Jetta? What up? I don't care. What Like, I got to get rid of this thing with a blown head gasket. So I went to his house. It wasn't a Jetta. <laughs> it was a Mark III GTI VR6. Uh, it was a 2.9 VR6 out of a Canadian Corrado or something like that. It was built. He didn't really know what, it was, what was good with it, but... It was pretty quick. Uh, Donovan had a Mark V R32 at the time, and those have like 250 horsepower. We tried to race on the highway, and he couldn't keep up with me. I don't know what was done to that VR6, but that thing was... It was quick. It was a roach. That thing was 
rotted, it was flat black. I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate of being young and getting your first standard car and being like, oh, this is cool, but it's just really a roach. And then you, you realize that when you get a new car. So, I kept up with my antics of driving unregistered and uninsured. <laughs> so I got caught, uh, no front plate, and then they realized that my plate was unregistered. So went to court, had to sell the car, sold it for 1900 bucks. So I was up money. Uh, bought my buddy Jesus's Prelude. It was a JDM H23, v so it was a VTEC, it was H23A, and uh, I think the oil pump went in there or something. It, 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 I don't know, I, I got I got rod knock, it blew up. Uh, ended up putting an F22 in it just because it was cheap. It was like 200 bucks, which I probably overpaid for it, but um, that, that also shit the bed. Um, what happened was the tensioner blew and the time belt broke and it was all this you know, it was junk. So, I ended up sending that thing to Chuck and Eddie's, which is a junkyard around here. And, um, I was saving up and, so, keep tally. That's one Prelude and one K5. So, after that Prelude, I found another K5 Blazer. Not a mint body, but, like, it, like the paint was, like, flat. But, the, the floors were redone. Same thing, good wrench Crate 350. This one had a custom dual bend, like, Flowmaster True Dual. Sounded sick. So... That wasn't registered. Now, mind you, the only car that I've mentioned so far that's been registered was the Prelude, and it was for a month because that's all I could afford. I was I was still in high school, all this stuff, so that's all I could afford. It was registered for one month, and I drove it for like three with the rod knock. So I got the K5, bought it for fifteen hundred bucks in uh, Worcester, Worcester, Mass, something like that, Massachusetts. Um, drove it back unregistered. Bought some 33s for it for like a hundred bucks, threw them on, and then I sold it like two weeks later, literally two weeks later for $2,800. Whatever, it was the come up for me. So, just for shits and giggles, I go on CT Craigslist as a Facebook page, and I just type in Prelude. Immediately, same thing as I had before, I had a 92, which is a fourth gen, comes up 95 OEM. BB1 Prelude SI VTEC had a H22A1, the USDMH. You know that that was the pretty much the best engine that comes in it, unless it's swapped for a JDM engine. So I got that immediately. Like blew the rest of the money on like I like spray painted it. Got like XXRs, you know the Honda Kid stuff. I got all that stuff. Um, fast forward like a year later, the next season, uh, I bought a whole nother Prelude shell to cut the quarter panels off. I did a custom like two inch wide body because my uh, my quarter panels, if anyone knows Hondas or Preludes especially, the whole quarter panel around the back wheel is just, they go they go away. Even in Florida, they're, they're, they're garbage. So bought the shell for a hundred bucks, cut the quarter panels off it, cut the radio support off it. I went on the JDM Craigslist and bought German headlights, as weird as that sounds. They had the same inserts as the one piece headlights for Preludes, but it was a glass two-piece and it had like adjustable beam height and shit. So I was, I was hyped. So I did a whole build on that. And as I'm talking, I'm going to just overlay pictures of like what these things look like. So that's what you guys are going to see. Um, so I did like a complete overhaul, painted like wheels, D2 suspension, all this cool stuff to it. And um, I ended up trading it, sadly. I, I kind of really wish I still had that car because I, that's like the most I've ever done in any of my cars. It was literally, I, every bolt on that thing was touched by me. I ended up trading it for a 2006 CBR 600 with 8,400 miles on it and it was bagged. So me and Donovan were like, Donovan already had the bike. He financed his, I think his was like five grand. He got it, it was a 03. He had like 11K on it, a really clean bike. His was red, mine was white. I'll overlay a picture of both of those right now. And I'll overlay a picture of what I was doing on the bike. So, basically, had the bike for probably a couple months, something like that. I wanted to take it to H2O, but it was raining that year. Anyone that went to H2O 2015, you know, it was like, that was like the, I think it was Hurricane Joaquin. It was brutal down there. So, came back, and me and Don are both like, dude, we don't need the bikes. Also, mind you, the bike was my daily for like four or five months. And I put like, I got it with 84, I sold it with 12K on it. So I put a lot of miles on the bike. Um, and I also wanted one because of the dirt bike history I mentioned. And it was, you know, bikes are fun. But 
you know, you can get killed real easy on a bike, so be mindful if you have a bike. Be mindful of traffic, I should say, because most of the time it's the traffic that almost kills you and not yourself. Unless you're shot and you don't wear helmets and stuff, but wear your damn helmets, guys. So, after the bike, I ended up trading the bike to my buddy Danny, who did Cam's tube front end. And uh, that's how I got my Z. Now my Z I had, it was 154K I think when I bought it. 154K, no third gear, it was a CDO1. He gave me a CDO8 tranny. He gave me a CDO8 tranny with it, which is uh, better synchros and all that. It's basically like, it's a CDO9, but first and second don't have triple synch or triple, yeah, triple synchros. Or triple cone synchros, there you go. So, he gave me that with it. Um, the pivot ball broke on the tranny with no third gear. And um, I replaced the clutch with the XED Stage 2, whatever. The whole plan of like me and Don both getting rear-wheel drive cars, we both wanted to get into drifting. So, fast forward, I got coilovers. They're one of one TDM imports. I uh, got it from this uh, guy who I think he's one of the I Love Driving Slow dudes. His name's Eric. He went bagged, so he sold me his coilovers for pretty cheap. And um, got some Z. I think SL5, They're, they were 19 by 11. I'll overlay another pic of that. Had this car, had my car all stancy, had crazy fitment. I'll, I'll overlay a couple more pictures of like the fitment and whatnot so you guys can see that I was not, you know, not being a poser. I had fake wheels, but my fitment was better than some bag fitment, low key. So, um, shots at you guys. But um, after, the, after that, all, after all my stancy stuff, I still drifted my car. I still was completely committed. I kept my car stock for a very long time, literally just for seat time. And for seat time, I pretty much, I don't think I ever really hit parking lots. It was all street stuff. And I don't really encourage this, but it is definitely a good way to not crash your car. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I never crashed my car. Everyone else is like, been in like fender benders and stuff. Not everyone else. Like a lot of people who start drifting, they end up crashing, but I haven't crashed yet. I may not be the best drifter driver or whatever, but I'm really good at not stuffing it. So how I practiced is I would only hit street spots. Never, never, uh, parking lots or anything like that. Unless there was like a course layout type thing, but this is all with my stock VLSD, which sucked. Like if I matted it one way, and go to transfer without keeping it matted, it would just open diff and straighten out. So, and yes, it's a touring, so it was a BLSD. I ended up selling it for like 150 bucks. But, go somewhere where there are, where, I only went places where there was like immediate consequence. Like, because I was always broke, I was working at a pizza place, like making like 8.25 an hour near my house and, it kind of sucked, but I mean, I still built cool stuff, built cool stuff. My, I built my Prelude, that was a legit build. Um, so, I was broke, the Z was my daily, I couldn't break it, so I used that as like an incentive to uh, kind of not break it. So that's how I got decent at drifting, and that's how I didn't like completely suck on my first event, which was when we paint matched the cars. I've only been to two events, guys. I have a lot of street time, only two events. It's always because like I had to drive my car there or I didn't have money or all this stuff. I'm in a decent spot right now, so I'm thankful for that. Having the job, YouTube, all this stuff. So I'm doing a little bit better now than I was, so this year is going to be cool. So anyway, fast forward to when I met uh, Orion. So my buddy Tony, shout out Tony, Kuro Lifestyle. Uh, I was chilling with him for a while, and uh, he hit me up one night, and he was like, yo... Come snow drifting at my work, blah, blah, blah. They got like a whole course layout thing. Uh, if you guys want to look up the video, it's called, what is it? I think it's called like Skids in the Genesis or something like that. It was in the snow. It was a snow video. That was the first video I was in. So I go up there and he was already friends with Orion. So Orion was there and uh, I kind of met him there. And um, when I went to Florida, I saw him post on Instagram because I followed him after that. Um, I saw him post on Instagram that uh, someone messed up his car, rear-ended his car. And uh, I worked at de a detailing place, so I was like, yo, I could probably get you some touch-up paint for like seven bucks. And he was like, yeah, we're... So, yeah, we were just talking through DMs and stuff, and uh, he was like, yo, come through to the shop. I'm like, all right, cool. Came and hang out. Also, Cam needed a cat, and uh, I got one from Roger. 
for Cam's car, uh, the 240, when he first got it. So that's how I met all those guys. And I just started chilling and we just became friends and they were like, yo, you, you're about this. And I was like, I don't really like being in front of the camera, but I'll give it a try. And I guess I've gotten better with that because I kind of hate hearing my own voice. You guys know, like, whenever you record yourself and you listen to it, you're like, damn, I sound like that? That's weird. But I guess I kind of got over that. So yeah, that's pretty much how I got into cars and met the Haggard guys and became part of Haggard. So I hope that answers all your guys' questions and um, be sure if you guys have like any ideas, I can pretty much post whatever I want on this channel. So if you have any ideas, I mean, if you want me to live stream, if you want me to post, you know, if, if you want me to answer other questions, just, you know, just leave them down in the comments. If you guys don't like the video, I'm sorry. I just thought, you know, because that, that comment got a lot of likes. I'm going to go back to that video and look through the, the comments and everything and see uh, what other ideas people came up with. And I'll be looking at these comments as well. So yeah, uh, let me know what you guys want to see. Figured I'd do this video for you guys. Maybe you'll be interested to know something about me, which is weird because I don't really talk about myself too much. But um, yeah, so that's about it for this video. I will catch you guys in the next one.